so they cut the hair. Um, you know, hair grows back. I don't understand the the. Well, when you're your age. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Guys, welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff, and Miguel himself, Sholo Maradueña from Cobra Kai, was here. He sat down with me for about an hour, and we talked about a lot of things about how he got started and how he's a very grounded kid. I found out so much about this kid. He is, I don't even know if I can call him a kid. I felt like I was talking to a 35, 40 year old uh, contemporary because he, he, is, he is such a well adjusted, just like you, I was so impressed by him, and I think you will be too when you just hear how he approaches things already. Um, he's been in this business for like a couple of years or whatever he is, and, and it's just to hear the way that he has already um, taken everything in stride and learning constantly. I love talking to him. I really did, and, and learning even more about how he got Cobra Kai and what he learned at Cobra Kai and, and the more that as he was working with both um, Ralph Macchio and William Zabka. It's a lot of great stories in here, uh, and I know you'll enjoy it, so I'm glad to um, to give you this interview, so enjoy it. And also, I'd like to mention our buddies over at Rode. Um, this episode of One on One is brought to you by Rode Microphones, and Rode's proud to present My Road Reel. It's the world's largest short film competition. This year, there's $1 million. Do you hear that? $1 million worth of prizes up for grabs. You make a three-minute short film in any genre that you want, a behind-the-scenes video showing a Rode product being used, and then you could win big. The entries are open until July 31st, so you have to head on over to MyRoadReel.com and get shooting. One more time, MyRoadReel.com. All right, guys, thanks again, and here's One on One. All right, welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff. And you guys know, if you've been watching the channel over the last couple of weeks, uh, or my Twitter or anything, or my Facebook, I've been raving about Cobra Kai, and I can't stop talking about Cobra Kai. We had the creators on last week, and mm -hmm. how about this? Right now, we got Miguel himself here. Sholo Medaguena. Yeah. Get it? That was, yeah, that was, that was very, very close. Ish. That was... Ish, yeah. Ish. All right. So you were telling me, though, do it better than your teachers. Yeah. Though. A lot of my teachers, it's the X that throws people off. You know, it's the only word that a lot of people know that starts with X is xylophone. Right. You know? And so they go so solo I get right Zolo, away. Zolo, yep. Yeah, yeah, Zolo, yeah. Xylo, right. uh, Xolo. They don't know that SH. The yeah. Sh it, yeah. Ho yeah. That, yeah. That yeah, was, that was really, really good. Okay. That was, yeah. That I'll was really good. I'll go do that again. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll end it on a good note. There you go. Yeah, and then I ruined it. Um, so what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. Uh, crushing it with this, uh, with this series. That's what, that's what I, um, it, it really has been a blessing, you know, yeah. uh, the opportunity presented itself and I'm really happy that the boys and Ralph and Billy, they brought me on board. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, really thankful. Well, we're going to get into all that stuff too, because I want to know, first of all, the funny thing is the uh, first time I ever saw you is my wife was mm -hmm. a diehard, uh, parenthood. <laughs> oh, diehard. I mean, she was, it was her show. That's where, that's where I came with Don't bother me. Kids don't bother <laughs> yeah. me. That was it. Just lock into parenthood and that was it. And, mm -hmm. and that was kind of like your, your first big yeah. gig, right? That so, was, yeah, that was one of the first uh, roles I really ever had. So. Yeah. So how'd you get, I mean, auditions obviously, mm -hmm. but I mean like what, what's that process? Like, cause you grew up, you're an LA kid, mm -hmm. right? So you grow up in LA, you, you know, and you, first of all, how long before you know you want to go into acting? So I went around eight or nine years before even being exposed to the acting world. So from ages zero to around nine, uh, I was not exposed at all to the acting world. And then from nine, to, like the nine, 10 range, we moved from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. Okay. And right around that time, my mom had a friend who was like, yeah, you know, your son's like somewhat cute. Like you should, <laughs> you, you should, you, you should send him out. Like there's no, right. like there, we have, I have an agent and you should just go out for it. Just try just to see what happens. Right. And my mom was like, oh, you know, all right. Like, but hesitant. If, yeah. Just yeah. a little hesitant because you, you see all these kids on Disney and, and the Nickelodeons at the time. And they just totally went off the edge, you know, to, went off the, to the deep end. She's like the Corey Hames and, of the world. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know, because it's either you go the Disney route or you don't go the Disney route, you know? Right, right. So, so uh, we well, were to like... And to be fair, there are a lot of yeah, ones that, that, yes, that exactly, stay. Right, exactly. but I know what you're there saying. There are yeah, the, yeah, yeah, your... Yes. Selena Gomez is your Justin Timberlake. One hundred percent. But, you're, you're, but, but your um, mother's right to think that way because she's, she's nervous. She's protective of her of her exactly. child. So she's like, but but then again, she also got to trust yeah. in you and, and your head and, and the way that you're going to be able to present yourself. Exactly. So she was like, look, we'll go out. We went out for a, a Sears commercial. That was my first audition. She's like, look, 
if you get it, great. If you don't, then we tried. Then, you know, at least right. we, we uh, tried something new and I went out for the Sears audition and I booked it. Okay. And we were like, whoa, what the, like, okay, this usually, like, the ball started rolling a lot quicker than we had anticipated. And because of that, you know, we were like, okay, so now I guess it's necessary to move to an agency rather mm -hmm. than just having an agent. Right. Uh, so then I, you know, I, I moved to an agency and then the audition for Parenthood came up. It was my first television audition. Yeah. So we were like, all right, we don't really know what to do. We had Are just you been scared doing going into that. It, it was yeah. really intimidating just because, you know, I hadn't watched a lot of TV up until that point. My mom was really big about like screen free. Like we yeah, don't yeah, really yeah. need to do TVs and Smart. stuff like that. I got two yeah, kids and my, 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 I got to keep my daughter off the iPad, man. Yeah. So that's, that's my weekends. sister. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So she was like, all right, you know, I don't really, we don't really know what to do. You've been doing print and commercials this whole time. Right. So we'll try out, you know, doing a television and look, I mean, you'll hear a lot of no's until you get the yes. And that's just, you know, building thick skin. And then you get the yes on the first audition. No, so then, <laughs> right. so then we went out for the audition right. and we didn't really hear anything for like a month. And we're like, oh, okay, we'll right. move on to the next one. And then we got a call from NBC like, hey, you know, we really liked your audition. We want you to come back for a callback. You know, I didn't it was like uh, other than not uh, you know commercial callbacks, which is usually the end of it. You know, we went out for the callback. Then they're like, "All right, we liked that. We want you to do a second callback." Right. And then that's when it kind of got serious because it was like, "All right, so now they've liked me twice yeah, yeah, yeah. enough to call me in twice." So then they're like, "All right, so now we want you to do this thing called a chemistry read." Right, and I'd yeah, never done. I like I was what is a chemistry read? I was like, I don't even know what chemistry read. Who did you do the chemistry read with? So that was with Eric Christensen oh, wow, okay. and Sam Yeager. Yeah, yeah. And then uh Jason Kadams was in the room, and I wanna say Lawrence Thrilling, our uh director at the time, mm -hmm. was also in the room. But definitely Erica and Sam were there. Right. And we read a scene. Uh, I don't even think it made it to parenthood, but we read a scene about uh, you know, me being adopted and stuff like this right. and me just being discontent with the situation that we were in. Sure. And, you know, so we did the audition. I felt good about it. I didn't really, you know, all, all these auditions, I was like, great job. So I never know, you know, I always come back and tell my mom, they said I did great. They're like, okay, well that means yeah. nothing because, you know, they always say that you do great. So we waited around one or two weeks and they were like, all right, look, we really like your work. If you let us shave your head, you got the part. Is that really what they yeah. said? Yeah. There? Okay. So my and hair was locks. super, yeah. Like this. Right now it's long, right. but it was even longer than that. Right. So they're like, look, we really like your performance. Do you say no way? Right? No, absolutely <laughs> not. We're like, yeah, I'll right. shave my head right now. Right, right, right. So, so they cut the hair. Um, you know, hair grows back. I don't understand the... the well, when you're your age. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. When, you, yeah. when you're my age, it grows yeah. back. But um, we're yeah. like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll do it. You know, we it was the season finale of uh, season three. Okay, that's when you and came in. So you came yeah. in at three. So that, a lot of this is intimidating. So fin I want you to finish, but I also I have so many questions after hearing all that. But please, yeah. So so I came in the season finale. It was one day. We shot for maybe four hours, and yeah. they're like, "All right, thanks, great that job." And that was it. And since that was the season finale, we waited another five months before it, and before hearing back. And they were like, "Look, the people really loved your character. We want you to come back for wow. season four. And uh, Here's like the contracts and stuff like that, and, and let's get go. to it. So there you and, go, jump starts the mm -hmm. career that way too. Now here's here's a couple of questions I have about that too, because Parenthood that's that's not only there's a couple of reasons why that is super intimidating for someone who's just mm -hmm. getting started. One of those reasons is because, like you said, season four. Mm -hmm. So this is a dynamic of a, of people who have been working together for a bunch of different seasons, mm -hmm. and then here's this new kid who come in, but also probably helpful because of what the role calls exactly. for. The other part of it is it being adopted and being a deeper role here, mm -hmm. and because you have to go to these emotional places a lot mm -hmm. of different times in that show. What's that like? And the first thing I have to ask you though too is like, so what you you mentioned you you're with your mom mm -hmm. in Vegas. You guys, uh, yeah, it was it was my mom and my dad in Vegas, okay. and then uh, my dad got a job out here in Los Angeles, so we just. Okay, so your, your family, your, your parents are together. You mm -hmm. go, you go, the whole family moves together. So this is mm -hmm. very foreign to you than being yeah. adopted, not having, because uh, you, you come from the entire time in Vegas and in LA with a family that's yeah. together. So now what, how do you get there? How do you be able to, do you say to yourself, okay, now here's the emotional moments. This is what I need to pull. So, I mean, the first part of that is learning what it means to go through the foster care system. Right. Luckily enough, I have an aunt who works for uh, DCFS. So she's a, you know, a social worker. She works with these kids every day. Wow. So going into her job uh, every day for like a month, just 
reading different cases, uh, reading things like domestic violence, reading wow. like all of these, all of these really, really intense stories and actually getting to meet the kids and, and this the is what, parents like five and years stuff ago. like so, that. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, so you're, you're like in the, between the 10 to 12 years yeah. old around this mm -hmm. and you're reading all this stuff mm -hmm. at 10 to 12. Yeah, it's, Man. it's, it was really, but yeah. it was, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, but a Paw Patrol and all it's, that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of pressure just being that, like you said, it is season four. Yeah. You have this really, really strong fan base of people who are like, there's someone new. Like, why are you bringing right. someone new? We right. love, you know. Better be good. So, yeah, he yeah. better be good. Right. Right. Otherwise, <laughs> they're gonna give you back. So, right. so uh, because of that, it was really uh, I wanted to do my best, especially because this was my first, you know, television, sure. you know, spot. It was uh, that was the biggest thing, and because of that, it, it just seemed like it would have been a missed opportunity if I didn't, just yeah. because the the tools needed were right there. Mm -hmm. You know, my aunt. I we had lived with my aunt for a long time uh, before we lived in Vegas, so just because of that, it, it seemed irrational not to do it. Okay, where and was that? Where does she live? Where does she live? In uh, yeah, she so, lives. So LA she lives Vegas out here. LA. In, yeah, so okay, she lives out it. here in LA. Got it. And uh, I would go with her to work. You know, do the stuff, do this research, mm -hmm. and um, then come back. And then the the second part to that is finding that emotional state because it's easy. You know, making yourself cry is not doesn't mean that you're a great actor. Right. I think that, that that's not how you gauge how well of an actor, but really, even you don't, you don't even have to cry. Just being able to get to that emotional state right. and seeing it in the eyes and seeing it in the, you know, the emotions in the scene and whatnot, getting to work, getting my chemistry to be really, really well with Sam and Erica mm -hmm. was the biggest thing. Just because. And how would that work? Did you, were you familiar with? I mean, with Erica's work and everything before? No, or not. So I, much I was the only person who I was familiar with was Craig yeah. T. Was right. because he was Mr. Incredible. That was right. the only. That was the only. See, I remember from Coach. And, yeah, <laughs> and, and and you know, uh, uh, Bonnie Bedelia, just because yeah. she was in Die Hard. Those those were the only two that I really really had any kind of clue sure, as to sure. who as to who they were. Do you think that helped um, you or, or hurt? I don't know. I yeah. think it. I think. What helped is that they were all really, really, you know, the, the hospitality that they provided sure. was huge. Right. Nobody, that, that was, was, nobody yeah, was a good nobody, sure. nobody was like, oh, the newbie on set, right. like, that, we're that better happens. than him. And that, that yeah, that lot. definitely happens. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I've worked with, on things like that where that definitely has happened. I'm right. like, oh, okay, this is weird. So, so being put on such a, a show that's at such a high caliber was really, really great because it, it got the ball rolling at such you know, at the beginning, at the inception of something yeah. much bigger than myself. So because of that, getting to work with people like Jason Ritter, mm -hmm. uh, getting to be, you know, work with people like Peter Krause and stuff like that, working with them really did help in the long run just because they taught me so many things that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. Right. And just the how gregarious they are really did uh, make me feel like I was welcomed right. and I was like, oh, okay, so this is something that I actually want to do now. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't just doing commercials. It wasn't just doing print. This was something that was a long going project, long going. I'm not too sure if that's a word. It is today. It, yeah. um, you know, working on such a long project like yeah. that really did allow me to create a bond with people that I didn't know. Well, that's an interesting thing you say there because like you said, you go, you, the initial thought is let's try this thing. Mm -hmm. Then you book this gig. Like you said, it doesn't happen the way that it happens, mm -hmm. but it happens for you. You get this job on, four, on season four, but it's the passion that you start to get as you, mm -hmm. it's also the, the luck plays into it because of the great role that exactly. you got on this show and then the passion for, for everybody involved in it. Now, what's the what's what's your personal life start to look like now too? Because, like you said, you're going to school. What's how do you balance it? So, um, up until high school, it really wasn't a problem. Okay. Because, a, we were shooting out here in L.A., mm -hmm. so that meant that I would miss maybe half a day of school, and then I'd be able to go back to school because we shot in at you know uh, the back lot of Universal Studios. Right. I went to school. And you're 12, in, and you have all the energy yeah, in the world. And, right? and I went yeah. to school in East L.A., so it was like a 20 minute drive okay. at most. So I'd do a couple scenes, go back to school. Are kids cool uh, with you or are there some It really is. So, so parenthood is such an adult show that yeah. it really didn't show in middle school okay. and, and elementary school. So nobody uh, really knew. So nobody was right. like. Like the parents knew. Exactly. Yeah, the right. parents were like, what? You went right. to school with this guy? And the kids were like, yeah, whatever, mom. Like, right. Is he adopted? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right exactly. Right. So it, I didn't really see it up in middle school. And then uh, parenthood ended and I moved into high school and I started doing these roles, uh, Twin Peaks, Rush Hour, and then wow. finally uh, yeah, yeah. Cobra Kai. That's when it really started to get hard to juggle. 
because, you know, the curriculum that my high school has is really, I mean, this year I'm taking five APs. Yeah. I mean, my junior year of high school, we're almost finished, but having to juggle that, especially with, uh, you know, Cobra Kai shooting yeah, yeah. in Atlanta, that was really, really hard. Cause okay. you have to, you know, I what would have take, never, did you, did you take somebody with you on the road? No, it was, no. it was an online course. So okay. my, my school was nice enough to be like, yeah, you know, it would, it would be really hard to juggle all of this. We'll let you take an online course, and whatever you grades you get in that, we'll let you come back with over here. Were they so. Karate Kid fans, maybe? Maybe. I'm not too sure. <laughs> maybe, what, maybe that's what, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, so juggling that, as it goes for friends, I've kind of had the same friends for the past couple of years of my life. I got my best friend, Anthony, who I've known since middle school, and I have friends from my high school yeah. that that it's like four or five buddies that I've just stuck with the whole time. That's smart, because you also, I think, by, by doing that, from, and me from being in this business for a long time, you, you know that by sticking with those people, you know exactly. who's who, and you know, like, because I'm sure after you, Parenthood and even after this show, you get new phone calls and people it, yeah. like, hey, you want to hang out? But, um, you know, there, there's the positives and the negatives yeah. of that, obviously. But that's cool. So you have a core group that you stick yeah, with. Yeah, I got my five or six friends, and, like, I'm straight. Yeah. Anyone who comes and goes is kind of not right. necessarily... You take them on set and stuff, your buddies? Uh, I've taken Anthony on set a couple times, but... Uh, you know, shooting in Atlanta, you're not really taking any uh, right. friends out there, but right. uh, there was a large gap in between two parenthood. Be yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, in between parenthood and Cobra Kai, there was this kind of large gap where there, there wasn't like a consistent. Yeah, well, let's talk about workload. that. So, yeah, so, so when that happens, how many seasons of parenthood go on for you? You joined in four. Uh, we end uh, right after six. It was after six, right? Okay, so. That one I watched with my wife, and that was heartbreaking. And I, I knew enough about the show, and I, I, I had enough of the... Because I saw... You got into fights with your, with your step yep. brother and sister all the time. I, saw, I remember that. And, um, and then I would be watching that, and Craig T. Nelson, like you, mm -hmm. I was very familiar with, big fan of his. Devastating. I'm sorry. There's going to be spoilers yeah. for everything in here, so <laughs> get yeah. used to it. Um, but that was devastating. That show mm -hmm. ends. People were heartbroken of it. And now, like you said, now there's this gap. Yeah. And now it's like, do you at this point say... All right, I'm going to do something else. Or you say no. Let's let's hit the let's hit the ground and, and see what's going on. So I mean, that's really that's always the plan. The plan is to always be, keep on looking for work and right. whatnot. But there's this weird gap from ages 12 to right around I'd say six or seven months ago, mm -hmm. where I'm competing with, you know, my freshman year. I was or right before my freshman year. I was like five two, okay. super duper short. Um, and freshman year, I grew like six inches. Yeah. So now I'm like, now I'm a little bit taller. I look a little bit older. Were you waiting for it? Or did you, did you think you were going to be My parents aren't that tall. I was no, kind of okay. like, well, right. I guess I'm content with 5'2". <laughs> right. And then um, just and then, Yeah, day. and then I was like, all right, 5'8". Yeah. Now right. I'm 5'10". Okay. So there's this weird gap where I'm too play old. Uh, I don't play basketball, no. Okay. I play tennis. tennis I played okay. basketball for fun, but okay. no, no, not... I'm not, 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 not that good. My hand-eye coordination is kind of just terrible. I don't so, think that's um, true. I've seen you throw fists. I've seen you throw yeah. man. <laughs> well, that's choreographed. But, that's, but, that's but, you still got to be coordinated to do exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But, but um, so there's this weird gap from 12 to right around recently where mm -hmm. I'm too old to play young and I'm too young to play someone that's over 18 because then, because the, then they just right. take the 18 and pluses who look younger because they can work longer hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can, you know, they don't have to worry about getting. You can play like 14 teacher. and 15 for a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So, but then there's not a lot of roles. Everyone, right. everyone, kind of, you know, you have the Goldbergs. Mm -hmm. Those people are like 25 playing. Right. sophomores in high right, school right 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 you have you know That's you have all true. these different shows right. that they're like which is crazy like, considering all these different streaming services and everything too but you're right because the majority of stuff that's out there exactly. that's what i thought was so brilliant about about cobra kai because i do want to jump into twin peaks and all that other stuff too but it's cobra kai to me that i thought and i said this to the guys when they were here what was so smart about that show was you got guys like me was i was i was mm -hmm. a hardcore fan of karate kid mm -hmm. but then you get people more so your generation mm -hmm. who your your storyline and the people in 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 your generation mm -hmm. that's what's going to pull like yeah. that it's because that that all worked and it got me too because mm -hmm. I didn't know because then and again forgive me for this I, the 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 woman who the, the girl who plays uh, Daniel Larusso's daughter uh, Mary man the chemistry with you guys was so good and like I was so locked into that storyline and it wasn't a man and it was just it, it didn't just have to play to one particular generation mm -hmm. it was it just worked yeah so. I mean, yeah, sorry. That's why I'm saying with you, by what you're talking about there, that roles 
they don't exist like that out there. You get lucky. It, oh. Yeah, it really is lucky. So, I mean, going to the audition for Cobra Kai was really intimidating just because, you know, you're seeing all of these guys that are bigger. I mean, I'm, I'm a sh strong 140. But, <laughs> but um, you know, you're going to an audition room that you really don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they're looking for. A lot of the times, they don't really know what they're looking for okay. until they find it. And that was the case so, of this one, too? So, I, I Ish. would like to imagine, okay. you know, um, but you're going out for these auditions and it was, it's for Cobra Kai in particular, it was interesting just because I got to do a lot of auditions with Billy mm -hmm. and that, you know, my generation w is closer to the Jaden Smith karate right, kid. Right. I really didn't have too much knowledge as to Ralph Macchio and, and Billy Zapka and yeah. stuff like that. Makes sense, but I, it's crazy. I had watched the movie maybe once when I was six or seven, but okay. other than that, it was kind of just like, eh, you know. Um, How dare you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so you? disrespectful. Right. <laughs> um, but so the Jaden Smith karate kid was close to my age, and yeah. because of that, re like getting the audition, Cobra Kai, I'm like, okay, it's another role, you know. Mom, I got an audition for Cobra Kai. What? Right. Like, Cobra Kai? You, do you know what this is? No, um, this is the Karate Kid. That's you know? awesome. This is the, the they're remaking the Karate Kid. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I should watch it. <laughs> you right, know, right. maybe I should. And then and then working with you know, so I watched the movie. Then I went out to the auditions, and one of our first auditions was with Billy. Uh -huh. Do they give you the, like, how much of the of the sides do they give you? So now? they give you so for this one in particular, it was a little bit different because they gave us one scene from the beginning of show uh -huh. and one scene from the end. Okay. Just so that they could get to see if you know you can handle the arc or you can handle the change sure. in character or whatnot. So because of that, you know, I walk into the room and Billy's there and he's like, "Hey, how you doing? My name's Billy Zapka," and I'm like. Yeah, I know who you yeah. are. Like, yeah, Cause this you're is, caught up now. Yeah, because right, right, now right, I'm caught right. up, and, and now you know this is like Star Wars. You know, this people have been waiting so long for this to happen. Yeah, and because of that, done then right. the pressure was it, on. People were waiting the, for it done ex right. Exactly, because yes. you had your other. Karate Kids, yeah. you had your other... I'll say it um, for you. The third one yeah. was stinky. The, yeah. fir the, the, first one, the first one was great. Second one I really enjoy. Um, and then, but when they announced this series, mm -hmm. and I told the guys when they were sitting here too, I was nervous. I was, it, it really I was is nervous. because, you know, what I, what I hear a lot is, I hear two really big criticisms. I hear one, I couldn't tell if it was a joke or not. I couldn't tell trailer. if it was, yeah, I couldn't yeah. tell if it was like a, a joke trailer, a fan-made trailer or right. something like that. And then two, this big thing is like, What's YouTube red? That's and and right. and they're and they're both valid claims, and they're and they're both valid arguments. But what I think so I think what caught a lot of people off guard is, is you know you watch the first episode and people are like, this is good. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> they're like, oh, th we this isn't what we expected. Yeah. You know, I thought it was gonna you know it's labeled as a comedy. Right. And you're 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 so invested in these characters that they're like, oh now. Now it's like, okay, all right, I was wrong, yeah, I was wrong, it's on. not, yeah. yeah. So because of that, it's, it's moving past all the BS mm -hmm. and like past all the people that are like, B -b -b but it's not on Netflix and, and, right. and, and moving past all that and, and getting to the people who are either really, really hardcore karate fans or karate kid fans mm -hmm. and then newer people who are now, just now getting exposed to this, to what it means to, uh, to be part of the karate Well, kid. yeah, and then you also, when you, when you, are able to deliver that way, you start to see the numbers going up on whether, whether it's Hulu or wherever, where yeah. they're watching the movie, they're watching mm -hmm. the original movie now. Yeah. So I, I know people in this office that started watching the series, stopped within four episodes, yeah. rewatched Karate Kid again. I did the same thing, and I was listening to the Bill Conti score, like driving here when I was interviewing yeah. the guys. It was like, it got you back in, and yeah. like you said, as far as it was like a, a Star Wars type of feel, because there is a lot of mythology inside mm -hmm. of this, and now adding upon it, um, that also to you because this is like you said you're coming off parenthood but now this is another big series here mm -hmm. that you don't know because it's on youtube red exactly. and because you don't know how people are going to respond to it it might be easier to approach because it's like okay well let's just do this thing mm -hmm. we know we have good material but what's that what's the first thing that you guys sh that you shoot what's your first scene that you shoot uh, do you remember mm, the first scene that we shot was uh, the scene, I, I want to say it's in the second episode, uh -huh. where I walk into the, you know, the dojo for the first time, mm. and 
I'm like, am I going to get karate pajamas? You right, know, right, and right, it's right. this dynamic between just me and Billy. It's the only people in the room. And it's, it, that was really, I mean, that's the audition. That's the scene that we did for the audition. Yeah. So we were super familiar okay. with that scene. Okay. That was the, so we did that first. I, I want to say that, don't quote me on that, but I want to say that was the first one we did. And then, um, that, it was really interesting just because I had never been to Atlanta. Okay. I'm, I was 16. I'm still 16. I'm about to turn 17. Okay. But, um. You know, moving to a place for four months that I had no idea about yeah. is really intimidating. Any family with you? Working, at all? yeah, my mom. Okay. My mom had to be with me. I'm a right. minor, so right. she has to come with me everywhere. Right. Um, so because of that, you know, meeting people that you don't know. The only person I knew were the directors and Billy. Okay. Um, working with cameramen, crew, cast that you're supposed to. Luckily enough. Miguel doesn't know anyone in the show. Right. So, so I was, I had a little bit of time to, to get to know everyone, but, um, th it was really difficult just because it's, it is a little intimidating, sure. you know, working with Ralph and Billy, mm -hmm. Ralph Macchio is a household name, you know, yeah. people know Ralph Macchio, whether it be because of the crane kick, uh, people know the line, put him in a body bag, you right. know, all of these are so the pop culture on these lines and like the different nuances from the movie, yeah. you know, wax on, everyone knows wax on, sure. wax off. Sure. I could live under a rock and, and know yeah. Yeah. wax on, wax off. So because of that, it, it really is, the the torch is being handed off to myself and, and the other karate kids right. and Tanner and Mary. And because of that, it's like, ugh. Right. I wanna make sure that I do well so that people think that I do well, you know? Yeah. It, so because of that, you really start to get nit nit nitpicky about mm -hmm. uh, scenes and lines and like, I want to make sure this is the best thing ever. You find yourself, so, you be, you're pretty hard on yourself, you think? Um, I would say the only time that I'm really, really hard on myself is after the product is finished uh -huh. and I watch it on the screen. Then I'm like, Ooh, I wish I would. I mean, this happens in my real life where I'll have like an argument with someone and I'm like, oh, I should have said this. Instead you know, that, yeah, right, exactly. Right, right, so right. just because of that, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have done this here, or this there. But at the end of the day, the directors are happy with it. You know, Billy and Ralph and those guys, they're happy with it or right. at least content. I hope, I, I hope happy. But, right. um, you know, so because of that, you kind of just have to, it is what it is. It's that's what they feel is the best yeah. take. And if that's what they think, then that's what it is. So you then now now you're as you're getting comfortable in Miguel's skin and you're starting to learn mm -hmm. this more character and like you said you're there by yourself well your mom is there but for the most part you're alone you're having mm -hmm. to kind of learn and understand very similar mm -hmm. to what he has to do and he's mm -hmm. he's with, he's got this one mentor this warped mentor mm -hmm. in in uh, Johnny do you and and Billy start to kind of hit it off uh, do you is he kind of closed off I mean like how does that work at first with the two of you guys. Uh, so Billy is one of the nicest guys yeah. I've ever met, by far. Uh, you know, I thought people on Parenthood were nice. This guy is so welcoming and really, really casual, almost in the sense that you're like, yo, something's wrong. Right. Like, what? Why are you so nice to me, you know? So because of that, getting to work with Billy, and I'm so glad that I got to work with Billy for most of my scenes just because the dynamic there was great yeah you know well it's crucial it's it's yeah, yeah you need so you need that chemistry just for the role to work but i felt like just outside of being that character having lunch together doing this mm -hmm. doing that like it really really was an experience like no other right. i didn't have any experience with you know i i had similar relationships like that with mary and jacob that were on the show but I mean, the age gap between myself and Billy is huge. Mm -hmm. And finding things that we both like, finding interests, common interests, you know, like what? bonding over, um, just having conversations. And, and, you know, Billy and Ralph, both of their lives are so interesting that what they consider mundane is freaking amazing. Right. You know, I remember sitting down with uh, Ralph and Billy at lunch, and Ralph was like, yeah, you know, just... You know, I remember back in however long, you know, having coffee with Rob. And I was like, Rob, who's it? Oh, Robert De Niro. And I'm like, oh, of course. Right, like, right. why would it be someone normal? <laughs> like, what? Right. So just those things like, oh, okay, so this is their life. And, and, and getting to kind of fit myself in right. to, to, to be just a small part of, of their huge lives was really, really great because then, cause then I get texts from Ralph. Hey, you know, what is this? What is, you know, or... 
how do you feel about this? Or getting texts from Bailey like, hey, hope you're doing well. Even like, even offset, you know, we finished in December, even after that, getting that dynamic with them really was, I've never had a dynamic with that with anybody else. Yeah, well, I think one of the interesting things that you were able to do here with this character is what they, di what they didn't do because Johnny had one particular role in mm -hmm. the 84 version. Ralph Macho, Macchio, Daniel had one particular role. You have both of their roles mm -hmm. because it starts off and you're like, oh, well, this is the Daniel this time around. Mm -hmm. And by the end, you're like, no, that's the Johnny. Mm -hmm. And that that was such a great switch. Do you think and that, how how has that reception kind of been after people have seen that? You're like, no, d why are you going to that place? Like, uh, what's that been like? I've, I've seen it two ways. I've seen yeah. people like, uh, why is why did they decide to do this? Like, yeah. I love this character so much, and now he's an asshole. Right. And so I've heard that side. And then I've heard people like, oh, this is, I didn't expect this. Right. You know, I, like Miguel is such this, uh, he's, he's such a like soft and timid and like almost reserved uh, character at the mm -hmm. beginning. He gets comfortable. He, he, you know, finds himself in his skin and he becomes this, you know, monster yeah. to some, to, to yeah. some extent. And I, well, I'm not monster, but he becomes, he becomes Johnny. He, he becomes Johnny yeah. in the sense that he's so passionate about yeah. Cobra Kai that it's the only thing that matters. Well, it's that, also that thing, though, that they said, and, they, and they, made, they harped on it as they should have, was that no bad student, only bad teacher. Yeah. And that was what, and so now Johnny is teaching all this crease stuff mm -hmm. to you, and you as a student are taking yeah. that in, and then he goes, I, sh I, I messed yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, Johnny and Miguel and Hawk and Aisha to some extent, uh, they're all these characters who, you know, especially you see it with a lot with Hawk and Johnny where this is what they feel is right. Right. And if, if it's what they feel is right, then they don't feel wrong doing it, right. you know? And I think up until the 10th episode, you think, you know, everyone in Cobra Kai thinks it's like the best thing ever. Right. And then it's that, you know, it's the 10th episode where you see, you know, Hawk get disqualified. It's like, well, you want me to be a pussy? And right. then he's like, oh, crap. Like, right. That's me. Do? That's, yeah. I told him not to be a yeah. pussy. You know? Frankenstein's monster. Exactly. Yeah. And then me with the, you know, it's playing dirty. It's not playing dirty if you're winning, you know? Right. right. And then, and then it's that, it's that turn that really catches a lot of people off guard. And they're like, shoot, who do I, who do I root for? Right. Who do I, do I want Robbie to win? Do I want, Miguel to win. Right. It, it, so it really is, I really have to give it up to the guys for, for their writing because they've had this planned since day one. Yeah. You know, we read scenes from the championship at the auditions. Yeah. They knew what they were doing the whole time and they're just sitting here like, yes, They love it. They're like, yes. they're scientists. I know exactly. They, they, so, said, they said they know where their series ends, which exactly. is amazing. Exactly. So, so yeah. I mean, even, even talking to them on the, before we started filming, they're like, we have ideas for season three. Yeah. That, that we, we don't even know if we're going to get a season two. Right. And we already know what we want to happen in season three. So because of that, um, the, you know, going back to that relationship, uh, that, that switch in a lot of these characters it really is because, I mean, you see it in the Robbie character. He's this, you know, tough, badass, yeah. kind of rebellious guy. And then at the end, he's, he is really closely tied to Ralph. He's well, he's this, the one. Yeah, he's exactly. the, he did the switch like to where the, the two of you guys are very similar. He was, in the beginning, was Johnny yeah. and then did the switch to, yeah, to exactly. Daniel, which I thought was very smart. Yeah, yeah. And, and especially you have the relationship where Johnny and Robbie is Johnny's son. Right. And you have the scene, I think it's like seven or eight, where... Uh, Johnny finds out that Daniel is is that was great. is uh, yeah. you know coaching his son, and it's like you feel the anger and you feel the pain, especially because they were having a great time yeah. drinking at the bar, and then and then he comes in like, hey, sensei, and he's like, oh, like Shoves you can, him in yeah. The back. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so true. it's moments like those where where the audience is like. This is great. Yeah. This is this is what sets apart the good shows from the great shows. It's investment. And yeah. It's investment for sure. And so tell me a little bit about the so Robbie now. You guys do mm -hmm. they keep you guys separated for the most part or do you guys what's that relationship like? I had maybe one or two scenes with with Tanner, you know, um well, you fight each other. Yeah, we fight yeah. each other <laughs> and and yeah, I mean so so because of that I would say from like 2 to 8 I maybe have one scene with him. Yeah. Uh two I think. Um and because of that, 
we didn't really, I, t I had seen him in the audition room and I had seen him when we were flown out to Atlanta. Yeah. But other than that, it was really, you know, Jacob Bertrand who plays Hawk yeah. was a great guy. So I, I hung out with him a lot. Well, they kept the Cobra guy yeah, together. Yeah, they kept the Cobra yeah. guys together. We had a lot of scenes. And, and Tanner and Ralph even, we didn't have too many scenes together. That had to be done on purpose and, though, to and, keep you away from each other. And because of that, I mean, well, so I, w I was speaking with Tanner on the 10th episode, and he was saying, like, this, this role meant so much to him that, well, not that it didn't mean that much to me. I know what but, you mean. Yeah, but yeah. It, he was so invested in this role that he didn't talk to Billy. Right when shooting the 10th episode. Right. Because he wanted to get into that zone of, I'm doing this for, you know, Daniel, right. but also because f my dad. Mm. And, you know, all of this stuff has happened. He wasn't there for me at the beginning. This kid comes along, Miguel comes along, and all of a sudden he wants to act like a dad, and I'm going to beat Miguel right. just to spite him. Right. So you feel like that, all yeah. of yeah, you feel that in there, and because of that, I mean, they didn't talk. Yeah, we shot that episode for like a week and a half, yeah. and they didn't talk at all. And yeah. at the end, they shook hands, hugged, That's and great. it was like, oh, it, it felt heavy, yeah, and it yeah. felt intense because you know, it's it's like these guys are these guys know how serious this is, and they know that switch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got to give it pr props to all those actors. They worked really, really hard uh, to make this happen, and, and, it, and it looks great. Yeah, did you guys, so when you're hanging out with the Cobra Kai crew, you guys, who, who's the goof off? Who's the one, that, it's, is that you? It's Jacob and I. Jacob, yeah. you guys? Yeah. yeah, Jacob and I, I mean, I spent the most time with him, I think just because our parents really hit it off. His mom and my mom really, yeah. really hit it off. So because of that, I think we just spent, we were exposed to each other most of the time. Yeah. But it really is weird because a lot of these uh, kids on Cobra Kai, they're either from Los Angeles or local. Mm -hmm. So the kids in Los Angeles, uh, Jacob, uh, you know, Dimitri, Gianni, who's not in Cobra Kai, but he plays our, another one of our best friends. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Anna, who plays uh, Yasmin. A lot of these kids, they're up for, like they're here for a week, then they fly back, then they're right. here for a week. So because of that, it's kind of like, oh, I don't like, how close can we get because you're gone, you know? Right. So because of that- uh, Try not to get too attached to people? Um, I, I wouldn't say try. Right. I think it just happened to be are that way. Not no? even weary, okay. just because, you know, these kids are, these are the closest people to my age. Sure. Uh, Jacob is two years older than me. Okay. He's, uh, and Nicole, she plays Aisha. We're the same age. Okay. So other than that, everyone's either really, really old or younger. Mm -hmm. um, so be, yeah, not really, really old. Older, hey, older. Throw the kick. <laughs> yeah, 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 wax on, wax off. So, be, right. uh, so because of that, it, we were just, we had to spend a lot of time together sure. just because, you know, who are you gonna, yeah, It makes you, know, you feel comfortable. Exactly. Totally. All right, so, so then, all right, you're, you form these relationships um, mm -hmm. and then, so the other thing I was, I was wondering now to be, you have this, first of all, Parenthood hits, does mm -hmm. really well. Now this show hits and it mm -hmm. blows up. When you're filming this thing, do you think, because everybody thinks about this stuff, but do you think that this is going to be a hit or does it start to say, ah, it's YouTube Red, maybe it does okay, like what, it's Karate Kid. What, what's your thought process on it? Because I know you had confidence in mm -hmm. what's being shot and you feel like you're talking about, mm -hmm. you, you feel those emotions, you see everything happening, but do you think it's going to do what it does? I think it, it really is scary up until May 2nd when it came out. Right. Because it's, there's no middle, there's no gray. It's either people who are like, yes, I've been waiting, or right. people are like, yeah, this is a flop. Right. Like, come on. Right. So, so because of that, it was kind of like, ugh, I, I just want it to come out already so people can see it. Either, I don't even, it's not that I didn't care if they liked it, but I'm like, if you don't like it, then that's fine. Right. You know, the stress but of, of the, yeah, of the worrying it's just about like, it, right. gosh, it, right. all these people are, you know, but it, it really is a lot. I don't really see it much just because, you know, the headliners are Ralph and Billy. Yeah. And because of that, that's what people come for. Pressure's, to, pressure's exactly. on them at first. Yeah. Exactly. The pressure's on them. They come for Ralph and Billy and they stay for the kids. I think that yeah. that's what it ultimately is. So because of that, the only pressure that was on me was once it came out. Right and people, what people think of your character. And, and this happens to all shows. Um, you know, you have your really, really big shows that hit, and then even the smaller shows, um, 
really have people that get invested to the mm-hmm. show. So because of that, you're always going to get criticism. Right. I didn't. I didn't. You know. Do you none listen of us, to critics? Always. You know. You it's. I. It, I listen to critics, and it's just whether or not I agree or mm-hmm. disagree. Sure. Because there's a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you don't see. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. That you, there's just a lot of, I mean, even just personally, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that you don't know about me. Right. It, what you see on camera is not necessarily what you see behind the camera. Right. And that's with everyone. So because of that, you really have to kind of, uh, you can't take anything personally. Right. Everyone, everyone's doing their job, whether it be critics. You sure you're 16? Yeah. <laughs> you know, every, every, everyone's doing their job. And me, if I was 16, I'd done, I would have been screaming at people. You're very smart. You're a smart so, kid. Thank, thank, thank you. But um, that's something that I've learned just because you, you know, you have to be resilient. Yeah. You, you got to have thick skin. And because of that, you, you know, I... I think it's great when people are like, oh, this is surprisingly great. Right. You know, and this, this character, this kid that we've never heard of, whether we've heard him from Parenthood or not, like, mm-hmm. he really surprised us. So because of that, I'm like, oh, okay, great. People like it. Right. And then there's the people that are like, the, the people that are like, yeah, he's not the original. So, so because of, but, but then, that, but what do they want? I mean, but, that's, that's yeah, a silly but, but then it's kind of like, okay, but, to an extent, I understand what they're coming from too, because it's a it's a lot of these people that are yeah. like, this is the karate kid yeah. is so close to them that they have what they envisioned the karate kid of where being. it should go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They have their own thoughts well, and, then and they that's should write perfectly their own show. Yeah, I mean that's perfectly fine. You're everyone's entitled to their own opinions. Yeah. And because of that, you know, you're always gonna get the haters, the the whatever's, whatever, but it's just it happens. Pay no mind. It happens. So, okay, so the thing comes out, and it crushes. I mean, mm-hmm. it does great on the first two episodes everybody's watching. Now, it, now it puts YouTube Red on the map, mm-hmm. and everybody now knows what the hell YouTube Red is mm-hmm. because of, of this show. Now, the situation that I asked you before, what is now the, A, what does the personal life start to turn into? Because now mm-hmm. you're on a, you're on a hit, uh, another mm-hmm. hit television show, but mm-hmm. this time it's different. Because mm-hmm. this time, the, you, are one, you are like one of the main stars here now, mm-hmm. too. It's like, because in Parenthood, it was a very nice role. Mm-hmm. But the spotlight it's wasn't ensemble. directly. No, the spotlight wasn't like kind of directly on you. This is this is really in the core essence is about Miguel. It mm-hmm. really is. So what is what's that like? Because what I've seen so far and heard so far in this conversation is that it's you and your mom are really tight. Yeah. Now yes. you also seem like you're you're very grounded. You mm-hmm. seem like there's I mean because a lot of people take take success and some people like you were talking about before. Some people can handle success. Some people can't. Um, mm-hmm. What's that been like so far? So, you know. Going back to my mom, she would slap the shit out of me if right. I if I you know, if I got out of line. Yeah. And you know, she is the most hardworking person that I know. And because of that, she's really raised me to be a person that is not only humble, but taught me at a very young age that nobody owes you anything. Yeah. Like these guys took a chance on you, so you better like be the most respectful person that you can to these guys because they could have chosen someone else like this. And I had a dinner, uh, you know, when we went out to New York for the premiere. I had a dinner with the casting over at Sony and Mm -hmm. the heads over at Sony and YouTube. And one of the heads over at Sony, she, you know, pulled me aside and was like, you know, I, you were like my fourth choice. I didn't really want to cast you. Hmm. And I was, and it was, I was like, Oh God, like, I don't know. Then she threw in butt. Yeah. And then (laughs) she threw in the butt and she was like, but you really surprised me. Yeah. And, and at the dinner and I was at the dinner and I was like, and I, and, and she was like, and I was wrong about, about, um, uh, not believing you. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's the like scariest thing someone's ever told me right next to the biggest compliment I've ever gotten yeah. ever. Yeah. So because of that, it, you know, handling fame being, you know, in the spotlight and whatnot, it really is. I wouldn't say it's hard just because I feel like I've been so accustomed to just really being the most humble person that I can be. Sure. But with that comes the people that, that, you know, and I hate to say it comes to people that are like, hey, how you doing? Right. Like I, new, we weren't really close before, but now I feel wanna, like we should be close. People want to hang out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, hang out, I hang out with Miguel now. He's exactly. My buddy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so because of that, it's really you start to see who's your friend and right. who's not. Because a lot of these guys that, that are my buddies, you know, they've known me since before I was even an actor. Right. So those are the guys that I'm like. All right, you were with me before any of this, you know, before any of this what stuff. About, what about the flip side of being a teenager? What, what about what about the ladies? The Dude, ladies the lady. In? I wish, but <laughs> they're, they're still non-existent. So, so I mean, there's also that. There's right. also the the flip side of 
girls, I don't see it as much just because, you know, I go to an all guy school, okay. Catholic, private, all guy school. My parents were like, all right, if we're going to go private, now's the time to do it. Right. And, you know, I got in. I, I, got went, to, I went to an all boys uh, Catholic high school. Out here? And not in here in New York. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, in New York. It was um, like going, I don't know if you remember that show, Oz. I need no. to it was all about prison. That, okay. that, was, that was my that was my high school. <laughs> okay. Um, so so you know I got in a little trouble in middle school. Right. I, I was kind of a crazy guy. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah. Like what? I was what I was kind doing? of wild. I was You're my, breaking stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> I was I was a pyro. Yeah. No. So so my parents were like, all right, all guy school. Okay. So because of that, um, I had really kind of started to mellow out throughout high school just because. Right. Um, that's when your mom's discipline kind of came in also too right? yeah like, exactly that's, that's that's what she's like all right now it's time for high school before you know it you're going to college right. so you're gonna get the stuff that you need to get done so that you can go to a great college okay that's the, been the plan since age zero right. you know she's been like you're going to a good college you're going to college i was like my dad my dad said the same thing it's very similar to where it's like okay look you're gonna my dad said this to me so you're gonna have all the time in the world mm -hmm. to well, you, you want to drink a beer? Go drink a beer when you're, when you're in college. You want yeah. to smoke a joint? Do that when you're in college. Go do that stuff. Enjoy. Get it all done first. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Then be an adult when it's time to exactly. be an adult. And I think that and that helped me. And that's, yeah, that's, the, that's the, uh, the conversation that I have with my parents a lot because it's kind of like, I just got my license. Good for you. Yeah. Um, it's like, but there's a party tonight. And, right. And they're like, all right, but curfew's at 11. That's the law. Yeah. The law is curfew at 11. You know, it's not like I don't want you to have fun. Sure. But it, it's this, it's recently has been like a constant, like me pushing the envelope. Like I just went to prom recently mm -hmm. and like staying out till two. Right. And that they was like the latest no? I've ever stayed out okay. ever. And they're like, all right, we're glad you had a fun time. Right. Now it's time for finals. So because of that, it really has been the constant balance of school and work and family and wax friends. On, wax yeah. off. These are Venn diagrams, yeah, yeah, yeah. but with with with, with, with so, wax off. Exactly. It looks, yeah. yeah it it is, but um, it is it is the constant trying to find the balance between saying, "All right, I can't go any on any editions right now right. because I have to work on finals." And that is something that just recently happened. I I, I it really gar it, it started to get a lot. Yeah. And I'm taking five APs. I, I just finished the AP test. I just finished my last one yesterday, and because of that, it's like. Ooh, it's uh, auditions and interviews and working with finals right. and trying to keep up with my family. I haven't seen my I haven't seen my cousins and my aunts and uncles mm -hmm. this year. So because of that, it's it really is trying to find that balance. Luckily, I have a wonderful team that works with me, Jessica. Yeah. You know, um, getting getting these these people that really want to see the best in me yeah. and really want to see me succeed and, and really are are working really hard to make sure that everything falls into place like it should. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Getting your team, whether that be your, you know, business team, the managers, the publicists and whatnot, getting your team as in the friends that you family. So yeah, the friends, yeah. the family, the the people that are closest to you, making sure that you figure that out. Because yeah. once you figure that out, then you know, then you can handle all the BS. Yeah. Then you can handle the whatevers. As long as you got your your teams on both sides, yeah. then you're set. I agree. And you said you said you have a sister. Uh, four. You have four sisters. Mm -hmm. Oh man, are mm -hmm. you so? Are you the oldest? I'm um, second oldest. Second oldest. Oh mm -hmm. man. Okay, so you got you've a got, bunch. You have four sisters. So you. It's good that you learned karate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. you can't pull my I, hair now. I yeah. know. No, oh, no, but you also be the protector now. Exactly, I guess too. Yeah. Um, it's funny because my, my daughter, I have a, I have a six year old and I have a six month old and oh, my, my okay. six year old's actually, she's actually taking karate. Um, yes. and I'm going to show her when, when she's a little older, I'm going to yeah, show that's... you guys show, not, not yet, but that's where I wanted to get into the karate part of it. Mm -hmm. Cause I also asked the, you guys picked that up quick, man. I mean, I thought, um, I thought that, uh, the, the, the kid who plays, um, Johnny son, I thought that he, Tanner. yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, Tanner, I thought, I thought he was actually a martial artist. He's great. He's really, really. And you guys sold it. You guys got to sell it. Didn't yeah, you? him in particular. He's a he's a strong dude. Yeah. He, I think he has like one shirtless steam. He's a strong he's ripped, dude. Huh? And yeah. and you know this is something, which, it gets a little harder when you're my age, mm -hmm. and not when you're Tanner, Mary, and their age, just because they're finished with school. They're done. Right. You know. Right. So they have time to hit the gym once or twice a day. Um, they have time to be doing all this stuff. Where now I'm kind of like, all right, I'm waiting till summer. That's right, when I'll get right, buff, right. you know. So because of that, it 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 was a hard struggle, just because, 
A, I wasn't acclimated to doing karate. I did a year and a half when I was in the first grade. Okay. Uh, Shotokan karate, but it really is not the same 10 years later. So because of right, that, right. you know, getting to work with Hito, uh, Hito Koda, uh, our stunt coordinator, mm -hmm. our trainer, the guy that really made everything fall into place, um, he, working with him three hours a day, it, it really is hard work. And do you just lock in? It's, when, yeah, yeah, it's just kind of like, all right, put your phone down. Right. Same Stop ethic, worrying same about ethic, that. Other. And the same ethic you basically have been talking about exactly. this whole show. Exactly. It, like it's it's kind of like, it. all right, we got to, the time is on. Right. You know, the pressure's on. You got to, the, the clock is ticking. We got to make sure that this looks authentic, mm -hmm. that it looks like you're actually progressing throughout the season and not like you're uh, someone who's a master who's just pretending not to know. Right. Um, so we got to make this look real and we got to, and we got to make sure that you're not hurting yourself. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Like stretching, I had never done stretching and I, hate to say it but my mom told me like three years ago you should go out and do yoga and i was like yoga right yoga like and and now it's really kicking me in the ass because she was right yeah. and and it really is did 90 you hurt, did you hurt yourself at all no no luckily i didn't hurt myself i got i got a kick in the face once oh yeah who kicked you in the face with Tanner, one of they? our scenes, it wasn't his fault. It was yeah. both of our faults. But I, I got a, I got a leg to the face, uh -oh. and uh, I have my braces, so my, I got, I got a little cut. But okay. um, other than that, you know, doing the the choreography, but stretching is ninety five percent of the battle, because if you're not stretching, obviously you can't get your kicks high, you can't get your whatever's whatever's, but it really, it makes sure that you don't hurt yourself. Oh, I'm with you. I hurt it's, myself parallel parking. So I yeah, totally exactly. understand. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, all right. So you guys are, uh, so then the, uh, again, the, the great thing was, so the guys, when the guys were in here, the, the they knew it, but the, they, the next day is when the announcement came out for season two. Oh, wow. Yeah. They were, they were in here the day before and you know, the, the interview didn't air until the day it was announced, but I, we were, I was hoping to see if we can get them to say it on the day of, um, where are you when you find out about season two? Um, Did you kind of? I'm know at her? school. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, at, school. at school. I get a I get a text uh, from the guys. Hey, you know, we got picked up. You're gonna see it live in an hour. It's awesome. gonna be announced in an hour. Uh, you lose so your mind it or was, what? It, it was. So that's really scary. Just because you're not guaranteed a season two. Right. Even, oh, I think that's my mom. <laughs> um, no matter no matter how great the show is, right. you're never guaranteed a season two because right. it, you know it's all about how successful YouTube Red does, especially because yep. this is a newer streaming service. You know, they have a, a couple other shows, but it really is just how well the show does. Mm -hmm. um, and But finally getting that text like, hey, we got picked up right. was huge. It's a breath. Because it? yeah, yeah. It, it's like yeah. a little like, okay, whew. Right. But People, you can also concentrate on school because you got a little bit of time before you exactly, start shooting. Again, exactly. Exactly. Right, right. Before we start shooting. So so now they're like, all right, we got picked up, back to work. Yeah. Now we're in the writing room. Now we're gonna start having stuff for the Comic Cons over the summer, right, for right, the right, stuff right, like right, this. Because right. you need to have so what, what the crazy thing about these shows, these you know, these Stranger Things, these Cobra Kai's, these streaming shows, is that people watch them like that. Right. It's like one big movie. Yeah. They're yeah. like one big uh, you know, I'm a you know, guilty guy. Yeah. I watch Stranger Things in like one day. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, well, what now? Yeah. And you have to wait a whole year and a half before it comes out again. So because of that, these guys have to be constantly putting out stuff sure. so that the attention doesn't get lost. When do you, do you know when you start shooting again? Have they told you? Uh, it's, it'll probably be around the same time, okay. August, September-ish. Right, for then probably come around the same, come out around the same time. Exactly. Like you said, you can do a little promotion. The promotion will be a lot different this time around because you're coming off a very successful season. It, it really it really will be different. Yeah. You know, I'd gone to Comic-Con for the past five or San six Diego years. Or yeah, New York, San, San Diego. Diego. Uh, for the past five or six years, just as someone who is really into comics and yeah. really into all things uh, superheroes mm -hmm. and now everything is at Comic-Con. Right. You know, you have your video game lovers, you have mm -hmm. your just television lovers. But now we're going, I'm like there for a reason. Right. And, and it really is crazy because now, you know, you're in, you're in the, you know, the pressure's on. Mm -hmm. So when you've been going out on these, like, so it, whether it's you're traveling, you're doing press and going mm -hmm. and doing interviews and whether it's New York or Chicago, wherever, 
have you, like, because you mentioned Stranger Things, and I just had this, I, mm-hmm. this amazing crossover mm-hmm. between, like, because of the 80s <laughs> it's, thing. Of it. It's so it's, genius. It's so amazing. It was, but, but considering it took place in the 80s, never going to happen. Mm-hmm. But the fact, <laughs> do you run into any of these people that you now, do you re- meet people? Because the conversation, like you said before, where Ralph's talking about, I had you know, that dinner with, uh, with, with De Niro. Yeah. Do you meet anybody that you're like, wow, they were... The, because I found so, Howard Stern was talking about Cobra Kai. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, my yeah. aunt, my yeah, yeah. the one that works with the, uh, she's a social worker. She's the biggest. You know, Stern's like my guy. Yeah. I love, she's I like, love Howard Stern is like my. Did you hear? He's the best interviewer yeah. of all time. And and this morning, I turn on my my Sirius and I, and I look. It says Cobra Kai. Howard Stern. I'm like, what? And I turn it up and I hear him talking about it. And he's mm-hmm. pissed off because Gary didn't. Tell yeah, they didn't go to the screeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like it's reaching everyone. Is mm-hmm. there anyone in particular that you would say, "Well, that's awesome"? Some tweet at you or anything like those lines? Um, Run into anybody? I oh, this one was weird. Yeah. So we were at the premiere in New York. Okay. Uh, at Tribeca Film Festival. Mm-hmm. So because of that, the the place that we were at, the theater that we were at has a, a bunch of different stuff airing, whether it be movies or a bunch of different premieres. Sure. And we're walking on the red carpet and we're walking into the green room and I pass by this voice. And I'm like, oh, that sounds familiar. So I walk back and I walk outside and it's Steve Buscemi. Oh, cool. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. And you know, he shakes my hand. He's like, how you doing? Like, I'm like, oh, good. He's like, what are you here for? I'm like, uh, uh, this show, Cobra Kai, it's the new Karate Kid. He's like, oh. Hi, nice to meet you. Right. And I'm like, yeah, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Right. like I should be saying that. And um, so Steve Buscemi was someone that I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of like I didn't expect to see you just because he is like someone that I he's a great actor. Oh yeah, you know, um, he's he's really really great. So that was one that I wasn't expecting. And then mm-hmm. just people after the show came out that were just tweeting like, hey, this is great. Yeah. Whether it be uh, football players or like Patton Oswalt, like oh, yeah. like just these different people that are that are tweeting about the show. These people that I didn't know yeah. were Karate Kid fans. That's gotta make you feel good. I mean, it, it yeah, is yeah. crazy because there was one. Who was it that in particular? I was like, there's one degree of separation between me and mm-hmm. uh, I. I forget it right now. Right. But just people that are that I that look that I look up to. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, a YouTuber, uh, Casey Neistat. Okay. He's a he's a he's a bigger YouTuber. He does vlogs, video okay. logs, where he videotapes what he's doing every day. And he, I think he's like top ten most subscribed people on okay. YouTube. So because of that, you know, he tweeted, "Yo, Cobra Kai is incredible." I love it. And I was like, "This yeah. means that at the very least, he's seen my face." And you know, right. just just things like that that I would have never. You know, now it's just waiting for Rihanna to check out Cobra Kai, you know. <laughs> which is crazy. But, which is not too crazy. We'd be which surprised. Is, yeah, which is now it's like. Right. She'll dude, be on season that, three. You, oh, no. that would make my day. That would <laughs> that would make my life. Right. But um. Well, you, hopefully you get to meet Elizabeth Shue next season. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Fingers well, crossed. I'm not going to get you crossed. in trouble. Yeah. Fingers crossed. No, I have no clue. Yeah. I actually, I actually yeah. am told nothing about. Like, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Keep it that way. I don't want to. I don't want to be the, well, that way the Marvel guys that are. Yeah. You get. You get. You got a guy. Come on, tell me. So what's Elizabeth Shue like? You can tell me. Come on. <laughs> and then and the next thing you know, you're like, uh, it's all over the headlines. Yeah, exactly. You, um, so, you know, other thing you mentioned that we do all, here at Collider all the time is the the, the superhero movie news. Did you see mm-hmm. Avengers, the latest one? Not yet. No. Everyone in my family has seen it. It already got spoiled for me. It already oh, got. Really? I already know what happens. My Your friends. Family's my friends are the worst. No, they my spo- friends. What are they it's, doing? It's my drug friends that are like. Uh, so we have a group chat, you know, I think it's like 30 of us in oh, this group man. chat. Just saw it, blah, 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 dies. They spoiled it? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, you, got, you, should, you know I know karate now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah right? You know. I know, seriously. Yeah. You better right. watch out. But you still got to see it, right? Yeah, I still got to see it. So are you are you, uh, your Marvel guy, your DC guy, your uh, all the above? Uh, Marvel? Yeah. I really, really love the Dark Knight series, though. Yeah, me too. That That's a great, you know... Yeah. Uh, those guys are that. That's a really great series. Yeah, Chris. I, I would say that's my favorite superhero series, but I am a Marvel guy. Yeah, I think I. I don't think you're wrong for that. I think Dark, the Dark Knight is uh, is one of my favorite movies of all time, not yeah. just superhero movies in general. But um, so you so you're an overall movie fan. Like uh, you got you're more like again because you say you started watching <laughs> a little later on. Like, yeah. What are some of your favorite movies? Uh, top three, top yeah. four are Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Great one. Up. Good one. Uh, Usual Suspects. Great one. Uh, Shawshank and Princess Mononoke, which uh, is an animated. Uh, yeah, totally. I had Clancy Brown, who plays um, who plays the uh, in in Shawshank, the, the the 
guard. That oh, was okay. Throat. And he was he was on, and man, listening to that guy's stories like about Shawshank mm-hmm. and everything too. I mean, that, what a movie that was. Yeah, Love so that movie. I mean, sorry to, to no, interrupt, please, but, but talking about movies, I have this conversation with everyone. There's this huge gap in movies that I've seen. It's either like I've seen it mm-hmm. or I have no clue about it. Right. For the longest time, I would say, I think it was while we were shooting Cobra Kai, uh-huh. I saw Pulp Fiction for the first time. Yeah. And it's these huge movies like Godfather, uh, still haven't seen Forrest Gump. Still, like, what? there's still a lot of. Forrest yeah. Gump. So, wow. uh, yeah. But, so, but, I like, but I like what you did, though. You went against, because uh, sh- it beat out Shawshank that year for Best Picture, and you okay. saw Shawshank first. I did, yeah, you. I did see Shawshank. Good that's that's an amazing movie. Yeah, that's a great movie. But there's a lot of these movies that I still haven't seen, yeah. and it's not on purpose. Braveheart? It's, uh, no, I don't oh, even yeah. know what that is. <gasps> I don't know. Really? It sounds, yeah, you don't know what Braveheart is? No. Oh, man. We'll go. Braveheart is uh, the story of William Wallace. It's Scottish. Okay. It's, it, it, do it. No, watch, watch it. Okay. Freedom? You don't know? Really? Okay. Gladiator? Okay. Uh, Russell, Russell Crowe? No, I haven't seen it, but oh, I know dude, of the see, movie. You got to see both of those. Okay. You got to see both of those. Yeah. Do, do, those, those two. I Braveheart. just got them. I, they, they were just sent to me. There's two, two of my favorites. And okay. the movies that you're throwing out are some of my favorites also. Usual Suspects. Do yourself a favor and watch Gladiator. Okay, do do myself longer. a favor. They're okay. longer. They're longer. But I promise you, you'll, you'll like them. If not, you can tweet me and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but look, look, man, congratulations on everything you got going on. Um, I mean, season two is. I'll be. I'll be waiting, watching. Hello. Can't wait for it now. Are, is there anything else that you want to do, like in the interim? Or are you just waiting to shoot this thing? Are you auditioning for movies? Are you just fa- focusing on school? Uh, you what know, are you doing? school's about to end. I think I have yeah. two more weeks left. It really is looking for, not on purpose, but like looking for other stuff to do to keep yourself busy yeah. in between. Because it really is. Uh, I think it's, it's as far as hobbies, as far as like jobs. Jobs. Okay. You know, it, it's eight months out of the year that we're not filming Cobra Kai. Right. So because of that, whether it be over the summer or you know. Uh, July, August, September, Mm -hmm. it really is looking for something to do. And it's kind of like now that Cobra Kai has a, like a tug, like this pull, it's kind of like trying to like get myself over that ledge where it's either get yourself in the door. Now, yeah, now, now it's trying to get my foot in the door, looking like looking at roles that haven't even, haven't even been created yet. Like looking for the next, like the biggest thing for me right now is this character Nova, who is part of the Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. like uh, like uh, universe, and he's this young Latino kid, and he hasn't been mentioned at all in the Marvel universe. So it's like, so trying to get better hope that James Gunn's a Cobra Kai fan. Hey, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I know. So so getting like just not even just imagining stuff like that, and yeah. and putting your foot in the door, making those connections, um, just so that down the line. Then it's kind of like, hey, right, you know. So that's a big. So if so, your dream a dream role to you would be something like a Marvel. Yeah, movie something right like now. a Marvel. Yeah. A Pixar would be cool. Yeah, a Pixar would be really really cool. But then also like the flip side of that, like uh, Michael Sarah is one of my favorite actors. Yeah, a super bad would be dope. You yeah, know? are they doing? Are they? They're doing another one, aren't they? Are they doing? I thought they were doing a sequel. Maybe it was a spoof. Maybe there maybe, was maybe. I thought I saw some kind of thing where they were doing a super bad sequel. But but uh, but those guys. That type of comedy. Uh, you know, you yeah, that type of comedy. Yeah. Uh, you know the the this is the ends the pineapple yeah, expresses yeah, yeah, yeah. those are really great. Um, Aziz Ansari is yeah. one of my favorite actors. Uh-huh. Uh, great comedian, great guy. Uh, so just like not getting uh, typecasted. Sure. Is, is the biggest thing, you know, the biggest thing I see with, with you know, being a Latino mm-hmm. in this in this industry is the East L.A. You know, you go out for auditions and they're like, all right, we want an East L.A. accent. I'm like, I live in East L.A. and I don't have an accent. Right. Like, you know, right. like Speedy Gonzalez. And I'm like, no. Yeah, like I've, I've gotten like Speedy Gonzalez T- before. Today? The and... And it's kind wow. of like, it, it's making sure that you're not like always going for the gangbanger, yeah. like the what up is it, like right. going out for those roles. That's, that's really something that I've tried hard to put my foot down just because it's, it's not the reality. Right. Anyone that lives in Los Angeles can tell you that it's not like that. It's, it's you, especially if you want it to be good and authentic and you want people, you want people to relate to your characters. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, of course there's exceptions. Of course there's gang violence in in your East LA's and your Watts and your whatever, but but it really is not like that. You can't just put all of us into right, a group right. and have it be like that's what East LA's like. Right. 
because the fact of the matter is, is that it's not like that. So going out to auditions and kind of not being a jerk about it, but just saying like, so I'm hey, interested. I'm not interested in that. Nah, whether, yeah, whether it be like, no, I'm definitely not interested right. in this or I, I want to show them what I can bring to the table right. just to maybe change their mind. That's been really, really strong. Like yeah. that's, that's been something that I, that and like making sure not to be like those two things are things that I really, really try hard to. And that's good. Sure that so do you, have, did you see Edge of 17? Uh, I can't say that I have. All right. So Edge of 17's movie, it was a really good movie, coming of age movie. We had on uh, Hayden Sito, who okay. um, Asian American, uh, and he, he, came, he came on the show and he was talking very similar to where it's like he wouldn't do roles that kind of portrayed uh, Asians in this kind of stereotypical mm -hmm. way. And it's like, and I think that that's, that's, that's the strength of the person who, again, mm -hmm. says, no, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to, and I think that's also probably one of the reasons, correct me if I'm wrong, to where you have that dinner with the casting mm -hmm. and you show, and you're showing this side of you. I'm sitting here talking to you for this last hour and it's just like, you have all these insights. And like I said, it's you early. You, you, I'm, I feel like I'm talking to a 30 year old <laughs> dude. And yeah, it's like, well, because you do, you have this great outlook on life. And it's obviously from, from what you were taught, um, mm -hmm. through parents, through friends, keeping, mm -hmm. keeping the right people around you. But that's very important too. And I think the other thing, the stereotype where you might luckily find yourself into, I, I hope that this happens, mm -hmm. is that your role of Miguel, you get the chance here mm -hmm. to play a good kid and a douche yeah. at the same time. And now, if you go out for the jerky kid, you can get the jerky kid, but then you can also go out for like mm -hmm. the, kind of, the, the kind of sweet, intelligent kid as well mm -hmm. too. So I hope, and I think that that will happen for you, and I Thank hope you. that you're seeing that more often, maybe it, since, since Cobra Kai. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still kind of... Yeah, it's still very, very new, yeah, and yeah. it's all very fresh, but yeah. hopefully uh, later down the line. Well, so thank you so much, dude, for being in here, thank too. It was a pleasure talking me. to you. Um, I look forward to having you in for season two. Absolutely. Um, and then when you book uh, Nova. Yeah, exactly. Right, there you brother. go. All thank right, you, brother. Guys, check out Cobra Kai. You know I've been saying this. I mean, I should literally just say that everywhere that I go. Check out Cobra Kai. If you <laughs> haven't, shame on you. Um, that's it, man. Thank you once again. And are you on Twitter or anything? Too? Yep. Twitter, Instagram, Sholo Maridueña, X-O-L-O -O underscore M-A-R-I-D-U-E-N-A. -E and it's all, I think, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. Do it. And then he'll tell you what he thinks of Braveheart on his Twitter. Yeah, exactly. All right, later. <laughs> That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.